Good morning, Times Square Church, Summit Campus. Today I would like to share from the Word of God is there's something that has been on my heart, and I believe it's for us. I believe it's for me and you to walk with the Lord, to be encouraged by the Word of God, and always to be a student, not to come to a point in our lives to think that we have arrived, that we don't need to be thought anymore, that we know everything. What a great place is it to be when we invite Jesus in every circumstance in our life. The title of my message today would be Save the Pigs. Save the Pigs. If we can open up to Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gardens. When he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and he and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. Verse 5. And always night and day he was in the, in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out, cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. In different words, when he came to Jesus... It's not like he starts worshiping as we understand when we say, let's stand and worship the Lord, but he maybe kneeled down or he greeted Jesus or, or maybe he just bowed down before Jesus. So uh, some scholars believe that that was a way of worship. Verse 7, and he cried out with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. And again, uh, the, the torment, Jesus uh, is not a God that torments people, right? But Jesus is a God who heals people. And again, the unclean spirit began to speak through this man, and, and the scholars are, are saying that possibly he was talking about the future torment, because we all know where the devil is going to spend his eternity. And, and he's speaking to this man, why have you come to torment me? Verse 8, for he said to him, come out of that man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. Also he begged them earnestly that he would not send them out of that country. Now a large herd of swine or pigs was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, send us into the swine, or send us into the pigs, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission, then the unclean spirit went out and entered to the swine. There were about 2,000, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea, and drowned in that sea. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told, in, they told it into all the city and the country, and they went out to see what it was that had happened. Verse 15, and I would love, and I would like to ask you to just, all of us, to just focus right here. Verse 15, what happened now? Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the, the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. So a few things that happened here, three main things that, that happened in this verse, that the people came, they were familiar with this man. And the people from the city, they came and they saw this man that was demon-possessed, number one. Number two, it was that he, had, he was sitting and clothed. So they were aware that this man was a maniac. They were aware of what was happening with this man. So now they're witnessing that he's clothed with clothes, and he's sitting now. No longer they have to take chains, no longer they have to take to bind him, no longer they have to tame him, but on his own, he's sitting. And not only sitting, but he's clothed with clothes. 
And people saw that. And the third thing, it says that it, he was in his right mind. So often the devil just torments our mind the way we think, the way we, the way we operate. And, and this man was healed supernaturally by Jesus Christ. And the people came and they witnessed that because this is what the people said. They witnessed these three things. And it's amazing what it says in verse 16. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. So the story went really rapidly around of what happened with Jesus and this man and, and how Jesus spoke to, to this man and, and how Jesus drove off these demons. And, and they're witnessing a miracle before them. They're witnessing the, what they were looking for. They're witnessing the freedom that, that can happen in Jesus Christ. They were witnessing right there and then how this demon-possessed man was freed. And verse 17, then they begged and pleaded with him, meaning Jesus, to depart from their region. And when he had got into the boat, he had been, the, the man who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he had departed and began to proclaim in the Archippus all that Jesus has done for him and all marveled. It's a powerful, powerful story. And we can see in the story that there were people that were bound. There were people that were afraid. There were people in this region that, that they were working, they were having pigs, they were having cows, they were having the different things in their life. And, and the wealth of people often back then was determined by the possession of the animals, of the flock, or, or of things what they possessed. And I've heard a story that, that if we were to translate the value of those pigs, it was probably close to half a million dollars that those pigs just went and, and, and they jumped out of that, into that, into that waters. And all of those pigs died. And, and it was a huge loss for people. It was a huge inconvenience for people. But also they saw before them a miracle. They saw before them a changed man. A man who has threatened maybe their families. A man who maybe cried out and, and people could not sleep in peace at night. A man from the mountains who was crying out, and, and the cry was not so often maybe a cry of madness, but a cry of help, but nobody could have helped him. A man who was sent to be in the mountains because he was unsafe to be among people. A man who people even tried to bind him with chains and tame him, but they couldn't because of the possession of demons that was in him. A man who was a threat. And now they're witnessing this man to be clothed. And I love that it's so detailed because when we come to Jesus Christ, He clothes us with His righteousness. And no longer we are living in the tombs. No longer we can live in the world. No longer we are those people that define us, our past. But Jesus comes and clothes us. And He says that He was sitting in different words. He had a position in Christ. No longer he was just to wander around, but, but he was placed in a place of rest. Isn't it powerful that in the new covenant that when we come to Jesus Christ, we are seated and we partake from the rest of Jesus Christ. It's about what he did for us, not what we have done for him. And we come to him and we rest in him. And also the third thing that happened in this story, he was in his right mind. My brother, my sister, you might seem out of your mind for the world, but in Christ you are in the right mind. Because God only not comes in our lives and changes our hearts, but he changes our thinking. He changes and transforms us. He, he renews our mind through the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And now we begin to think, not the way the world thinks, but the way God wants us to think. He transforms us. It's amazing. But what bothers me the most from this story is the people that never saw the miracle, but they saw losing their pigs. 
In their hearts, there was not a cry of rejoicing that there was a man who was bound and now he is free. But in their hearts, they rather saved the pigs than seeing a saved man. In their hearts, I believe it was a loss that they were thinking, I'd rather have this man in chains. I'd rather have this man cry out in the mountains. I'd rather have this man demon-possessed because this man came and interrupted our program. I'd rather choose the pigs than choosing the man. And as I said, the pigs represented the wealth and, and, and all the belongings of people. And my brother and my sister, maybe... We don't have pigs in our backyards, but we have something else that we call what we possess. And often God can come and move and shake some things around. And if our hearts are placed into the things of, of what we possess, we can, miss the, we can actually miss the miracles that can happen around us. It's not that the miracles do not happen. We're just blinded to those miracles because all what is interested in our lives is the things that we possess, that one day we will lose it anyways. The Bible says that we have come naked to this world and return naked. We, will, we did not offer anything to this world. We do not bring anything to this world. And we will leave this world not taking anything back, but taking our lives and what we have done. And one day we'll be answering before God for that. And it's amazing that during this journey, they, come, they came and they saw this man. They saw the miracle, supernatural miracle. And, and the fact that they tried to bind this man, it tells me that they tried to control this man. They tried to tame this man because maybe he wasn't safe. So it tells me that they tried to do different things to take the situation under control. And Jesus came and supernaturally changed the circumstances. And yet, they were blinded to see because they wanted to save the pigs. They'd rather have the pigs than a changed man. They'd rather have the unclean because even at that time, for Jewish people, that was an unclean thing, right? They'd rather have that, the people of that region, than a supernatural saved man. My brother, my sister... Would we rather have clean puses than have maybe homeless people come and be here with us? Would we rather just choose to hug people that are showered than they're the best of the best and they wear nice clothes and they have everything? What about the people that smell that from 10 feet afar you can't contain their smell? Which one would we choose? Would we choose to save the pigs or would we choose to embrace those that are hurting. Which one would we choose? Will we choose to save our image or to say, the image doesn't matter, but I'm going to do what God is doing? Which one will we choose? And the scary thing was that because they have missed the miracle, they said, Jesus, depart from us. This scary thought. Jesus, depart from our Syria. Yes, we've witnessed a miracle. Yes, we've witnessed what you're doing in our lives. Yes, we witnessed this man to be demon-possessed free. But we rather choose the pigs. So depart because you're messing up with our program. My brother, my sister, how many Christians today, how many churches today are saying, depart from us, Jesus, because we know how to do things. Because when you come, you will convict when you come, you will call us to repentance. When you come, you will call us to live a higher lifestyle, a holy lifestyle for you. When you come, you're going to convict us of our lifestyle and you're going to bring us to a place of rest. And we don't want that. We rather choose the pigs. We rather choose a lifestyle that, that we like. And the lifestyle of the pigs is kind of living dirty, living how you want, as long as you move and as long as you're alive. Jesus, you, you don't have room among us. Please leave the church. Please leave this community. Please leave this city. Because when you come, you kind of interrupt what I'm doing. And my brother and my sister, there are plenty of people that operate that way. That we rather have things in our life the way we want. And we're afraid to invite Jesus because God forbid he comes, he might interrupt my lifestyle. He might interrupt the things that I'm okay with doing. And I'd rather have him kind of outside of my door, but not inside of my house. 
Jesus, please leave the city because you're interrupting us. Depart from us. Depart from us. Today, there is many activists that they show up at farms, chicken farms, pig farms, and, and, and they're fighting for the lives of the animal. They're fighting for the lives of, of the beef that, that, that is there, right, that we have to eat. But at the same time, they're also protesting against a baby being born. At the same time, they're for abortion. At the same time, they're for, you, you can choose what you want to do. You leave, leave God outside. Did God really say that this is a sacred life? Leave God outside of this. It's our choice. It's what we want to do with us, our body, and, and, and whatever what we choose to do. But the Bible says that our temples, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You don't belong to yourself, but we belong to God. And when we understand that no longer what I want to do, but Father, your will be done. And so quick people can be there to fight for the wrong things. And yet, ruin the things that God has given life to. In the generation we live in, the generation of younger people, sometimes it scares me of the years ahead of where we had it. It's a generation that would rather save the pigs than see a miracle. It's a generation that will push out God out of their lives and out of their country, out of their circumstances, out of their cities. It's a generation that knows how to do everything on their own. And if there is a loss, they will be whining and crying for the loss of their possession and not rejoicing with the angels of God when one person comes to Christ. Because the Bible says when one person comes to Jesus Christ, all heaven is rejoicing. Can you imagine that? We're what, about 80 people here, 100 people? And, and can you imagine how much the heaven is rejoicing when, about all of us, for all of us? One person, the whole heaven is in shake, the whole heaven is in dancing, the whole heaven is rejoicing. But often, it takes a disruption for God to move. It takes a little bit to say, maybe not my program, but God, what do you want to do? Oh, it might seem a little awkward, it might seem a little interesting. But you see, when God moves, there is evidence of people being changed. And not change just for a service, but a lifestyle that is changed miraculously. And God forbid when we see that and we start shutting things down because it's not the way we expect it. It's not the way we want things to do. You're not welcomed here because you might, you might make the arpuse dory or, or, or people might, might not come because you smell. God forbid we'll come to that place. Let this church be always a church that will embrace the broken, that will embrace those who smell, that will embrace those who are forgotten, and will embrace those who are in the bondage of sin and say, you belong here. And when a miracle happens, we will be the people that will not say, God, leave our region, but we will rejoice with them because one sinner came to Jesus Christ. We live in a generation when the love of Jesus Christ that is poured through our lives will change our cities and our communities. Not when we will come to a place we'll say that we know everything, we obtain everything, but we will say, God, we're still broken, we're still in need of you. Move through our lives, reach out to the people around us, and help me never to despise the people that are broken. Help me never to despise those people. Pastor David Wilkerson started his ministries on the streets of New York City going and reaching out to the drug addicts and to the people that were the, the least of the least considered of this world. But as we know, later on in his life, God began to move mightily in his life, and he began to do, to, to, to do different ministries, different conferences. He began to do a church. And Pastor Carter told me a story that when he got in his age, before he passed away, that he said, I got to go back to the streets so I don't lose where I came from, so I don't lose that passion, so I don't lose that, that point, that, that compassion, so I don't lose that focus of where everything started. 
because we can get really comfortable in our walk with the Lord. And, and Pastor Carter was saying that in the night, Pastor David Wilkerson was almost in his 80s, and he would walk in the night, late at night, on the streets of New York, and speaking again to those people that are broken on the street. Because he never wanted to come to a point to think that he's better. He never wanted to forget where the roots came from of his ministry and where God has called him. And as we, being a church and the fruit of this ministry, let us not forget where we come from and reach out to Granville, reach out to Hershey, reach out to Harrisburg. And it takes all of us. It's not just Pastor Pavel or Pastor Nick or Pastor Josiah's job. It's, not, it's just not our responsibilities. We as pastors, we, we, we're, we're giving food to you and encouraging you, but it's all of us together. We have to do this all together, my brother, my sister. It takes all of us. Praise God. There is another story that is written in Luke chapter 5. If you can open with me. Luke chapter 5, the story of Peter. When Jesus appeared and joined the few disciples on a boat, and Jesus just encouraged them to cast their nets deep and to catch this fish. And, and what a powerful, powerful, powerful miracle happened in this story. It was a miracle because they did not catch fish. And now the response of Peter, if we can see Luke chapter 5, verse 8, says this. When Simon Peter saw it, meaning saw the miracle that just happened and the, the, the fish that, that were caught, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. I love this story because Peter's, Peter's circumstances was not that, God, I don't want you to work in my life. But Peter was in a position to say, I am so, so undone that I do not even deserve for you to be in my presence. Peter was saying, not, oh, Jesus, I saw a miracle, now depart because we don't want you to interrupt us. Peter was in a position to say, I'm a sinful man. I'm an unclean man, and I do not even deserve to be in the presence of yours. And he was just saying, Jesus, maybe it's best for you to just depart from me because I'm not worthy of you. And this is when Jesus reaches out to him, and he puts a call in Peter's life. In the moment of brokenness, the moment when Peter was saying that I do not deserve you, this is when Jesus says, but now I'm going to call you. And you're not going to be catchers of fish anymore, but you're going to catch people. It begins with us. It begins to understand our state of help that we need from God. The compassion that we need from God. When we see the miracles around us, when we see God moving, it's saying, God, I do not deserve you, but have your way. And God used Peter mightily in his life. He began to write part of the New Testament. And to this day, the gospel is being preached because there was a man that said, I do not deserve you, but by your grace, but by your forgiveness, by washing me and cleansing me, you approve me for this. What a powerful story. Oh, I choke up when I think about this because it was such a, such a revelation to me personally that Peter, he did not decide to save the pigs, but, but he looked at himself and saw how unworthy he was. But through the power of Jesus Christ, he became used, he began to be used by God, for God's glory, for God's glory, amen. I would like to ask the worship team to come, and we're going to be going to the closing shortly. But I would like to talk about a day that is going to appear. That here on this earth, we all have our own journeys, and we all have our own walks with the Lord. But there will be a day that we're going to appear before God, and the Bible says that every knee will bow before Him. The Bible says that every eye will see him. Everybody will acknowledge that he's the Lord of lords and king of kings. All the people will be aware of that majestic day, powerful day. But there were people who will hear a message of hope. And also there will be people that will hear a message that they would not like to hear. And one of the messages will be calm into my kingdom. Oh, you're faithful because I loved you. 
because you loved me because you gave your life to me you have faith in me you believed in me come to me enter into my kingdom now it's all yours but sadly there will be another group of people that will hear I, 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 I never knew you I never knew you it's a scary thought when we as people walk this walk and and, and we play with fire I'm not talking about when people struggle people go through struggles but intention when people begin to play with fire God is calling us to live a higher standard according to his word and he's not calling us to do that on our own but he's given us the power of the Holy Spirit for us to live the supernatural life that he has called us amen and if I can open up and if you can open up with me please to Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 to 23 and this will be the words of the other group that they will hear and Jesus will say now everyone who says to me Lord Lord shall enter in the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven not everyone who will say Lord Lord will enter in kingdom of heaven not everybody who just said oh I just believe because the Bible says even demons believe not everybody will just do that but those who fulfill the will of God, those who walk according to the will of God, according to the purpose of God, according to the word of God, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 22 says this, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. Well, that's powerful. I believe he almost talks to the people that call themselves believers here on earth. It, they call themselves that they are servants of God. But now they were doing things for their own image. They were using the name of the Lord for their own benefit. They were doing those things to put an image on them. Goodness sake, last night I was watching a little bit of the news and, and, and there was a televangelist who began to sell some type of liquid for $125, I believe, that, that those are the healing for coronavirus. Come on. This is what we arrived as the Church of Jesus Christ. That the New York AG sent a letter in prohibiting him to do that in New York State. And this is where we live. This is the country we live in. This is the time that we live in. That many will come and say, in your name we've done all these things. We prophesied in your name. We called upon your name. We did all these things. But Jesus never was the center of all those things. It was man's effort and man's pride and man's ambition. It was saving the pigs by using Jesus' name. Saving our image, saving our possession, getting wealthy by using Jesus' name. And he says, we did all these things, Jesus. Come on, don't you know us? And now, when we read earlier when the people said, Jesus, depart from here. When Peter said, I don't deserve you, Jesus. I'm a sinful man. Depart from here. But this is scary now because Jesus says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, who, who labor, who are heavy. Come to me, right? But there will come a day in verse 23 that Jesus will be using the same words. And those are scary words. And it says this. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. And this is the words he's going to say, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Wow. Wow. Depart from me. Can you imagine the words that some people will hear in that day? They never expected because Jesus always calls to him. But there will be one day when there will be people that he will tell them to depart from him. Those who did lawlessness and wickedness, who use his name for his gain, for their own gain, who use Jesus' name to save the pigs. And they lived a lifestyle like the pigs, who did those things and always rejecting the real miracle of God because the most powerful miracle of God it's not the wonders it's not the healings it's not all those things and those things are really important and praise God for them 
but the most powerful miracle of God that can happen is a sinful man getting saved. A sinful man getting saved. And so many people hung, hung up on, on all the other ones, all the other miracles, but they save, they, they miss that one. As the people from that city, when they came and they saw this healed man and changed man, saved man, they decided to tell Jesus, depart. Depart from us. We don't want this. We don't want supernatural things. We don't want people getting saved. We want the pigs. I want to save the pigs. My brother, my sister, what do you want to save today? Do you want to save people by the power of the Holy Spirit, by preaching the gospel? Or today we're going to stand on the sidelines and, and say, I'm going to save the pigs. Meaning, I'm going to save whatever what I'm working for. All my wealth, all my belongings, everything that belongs to me. And I understand that not all are called to preach from the pulpit, but we are all called to share this gospel with people around us when the opportunity is given. But I want to remind you, church, that when people are going to come into this house, broken people, people that will smell, people that... Maybe you might not want to have anything to do with them. Don't save the pigs. Save the people. Let this church never be about saving culture, saving pews, saving doors, saving things. Let this church be a church where there will be a shouts of groaning because, because this is where, where, where a baby is being born, right? There's shots of pain, there's shots of groaning, there's shots of, of just going through the process that maybe it's uncomfortable. But let those people feel loved here when they come here. We're not endorsing a lifestyle, but we're loving them as Jesus loves them and praying for them, for God to change them. The Holy Spirit changes people, not me, not you. That was the work of the Holy Spirit. And when we see the miracle that happens, let us be a church that will truly invite Jesus among us and say, God, I do not deserve you. Who am I like Peter? I'm a sinful man. I'm a sinful man, right? And let us be people that always will do things, not for our own gain and for our own image, but for the purposes of God. So one day when we stand before Him, we won't say, I did this, I did that, I did all these things in your name. And God forbid to hear the, vo the, the words and the voice of the Lord saying, depart from me because I never knew you. You did all these things for you. You used me for you. But you missed the miracle. You missed the whole point of what the gospel is all about. Let us be a church that will do that. Would you agree with me? Let us be the church. Let us be the church that will not fight to save the pigs, but will fight to save the souls. And rejoice when that happens. Rejoice when that happens. Amen? Stand with me, please. If this message spoke to you, I would like to give you an opportunity to come and respond. And this response is not just to me, but it's to God saying, God, maybe I'm trying to do things in my own life and that they're ungodly. I'm trying to save the things that are unclean because pigs were considered unclean in Jewish community. And it hurts when that dies, so to speak, right? But you might be here and God is speaking to you to put some things away. Let those pigs die so you can live. Make that decision to live fully for God. Make that decision to make fully for God. And the other part of the altar call I would like to give is for people that, you know, you know that if God gives us an opportunity for people to come that are struggling, for people that will look different, very, very different from us, that we might have a hard time but you say, God, give me supernatural love so I can rejoice. So I can rejoice when I see the miracle. Not to ask you to leave, but to invite you to send us more of those people that will find freedom in you. And if this is you, come join me here and we're going to be praying shortly in a moment. God bless you.